And good morning. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Did you get up this morning with a song in your heart? Did you get up this morning with a bounce in your step? Or maybe maybe that little overnight shower made your bones ache and your Rebecca's old bones ache and my young bones not ache. And uh, yes, I'm older than Rebecca, so figure that one out. But but, uh, but did, it, did that overnight shower either make you want to stay in bed a little longer? Or, or maybe that overnight shower spunked you up a little bit and it got you up and you were ready to go. And, or maybe it was the shower brought us down. But the sunshine lifted us up. Do you have a song in your heart today? Do you have a little extra pep in your step? Well, I pray that you do. Today's... Luke, uh, Zacchaeus' story, Luke chapter 19. We're going to look at little old Zacchaeus, and I, little old in one way and little old in another way. Now, for those of you that like to keep track of my preaching, and I, I support this, and I appreciate it that you do this. Yes, I preached on Zacchaeus about a little over a year ago. Uh, but uh, uh, when the Lord tells me to go back to Zacchaeus, we got to go back to Zacchaeus. But I went back and I compared my notes. And none of the verses match up, none of the verses are the same. So, the Lord give us a new word today, and it's an encouraging word, but it's a word that many of us need, and most importantly, it's a word that the preacher needs. And even more important than that, just like our Sunday school, well, my Sunday school lesson, not y'all's Sunday school lesson, my Sunday school lesson, God give me what I needed. So maybe it's a repeat Bible story or, or maybe you're going to laugh when I sing the Zacchaeus song or, or whatever. But I pray that we don't hear the story of Zacchaeus today. I pray that we don't hear a word the preacher says. I pray that we hear directly from God himself. And that is what I want for us as a church, for us as individuals, and for me as a pastor. Who's ready to worship this morning? Had a good Sunday school lesson, had good fellowship, got a couple of visitors with us. Make sure we make those visitors feel welcome, and let's stand up and let's worship a risen Savior this morning. All right, we're going to turn to hymn number 65 in the red book, Where He Leads Me, I Will Follow. I can hear my Savior calling, I can hear my Savior calling, I can hear my Savior calling, take thy cross and follow, follow me. Go with him through 
the judgment I'll go with him through the judgment I'll go with him through the judgment I'll go with him with him all the way where he leads me i will follow where he leads me i will follow where he leads me i will follow i'll go with him all the way. He will give me grace and glory. He will give me grace and glory. He will give me grace and glory. And go with me, with me, all the way. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he I'll go with him, with him all the way. Very good. We're going to turn to hymn number 92. And Tommy, there's bass in this song. Anybody else that can pull on that bass part, we appreciate it. And we'll do just a little talk with Jesus. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in, and then a little light from heaven filled my soul. It bathed my heart in love and wrote my name above, and just a little talk with Jesus made me whole. Have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry. He will answer by and by. Feel a little prayer wheel turning. Know a little fire is burning. Find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Sometimes my past seems dreary without a ray of cheer and then a cloud of doubt may hide the light of day the mist of sin may rise and hide the starry skies but just a little talk with Jesus clears the way have a little talk with Jesus tell him all about our troubles Hear our faintest cry, answer by and by. Feel a little prayer will turn in, know a little fire is burning. Find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. I may have doubts and fears, my eyes be filled with tears. But Jesus is a friend who watches day and night. I go to him in prayer. He knows my every care. And just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. 
Have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our troubles. Hear our faintest cry. Answer by and by. Feel a little prayer will turn in. Know a little fire is burning. Find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Thank you. Okay, uh, good morning, good morning. I ain't chasing that squirrel. I'll wind up chasing it in a minute. I know I will. Good morning. Glad you're here. Thank you for being here. If I ask you how tall you were, anybody know how tall they are? How tall are you? Come here. Turn around. I ain't got no book. Uh, yeah, ooh, with your boots on, you're about five, almost 5'3". Five, Anybody know? Well, come here. Come here. Stand up. Turn around. Oh, don't kick my tape. Yeah, four something. That'll work. <laughs> well, first of all, I want to remind you what one of my little shorter friends of life told me one time. They says, God only allows things grow till they reach perfection. He's still working on you. Okay? So... So us tall folks, you know, and I'm not really tall. I guess I'm average for, for a man, but all right, I've got to chase it down. Anybody that wants to see it? This tape measure was one I left on a job. Can y'all read what that says? It says, your S-T-U-P-I-E-D. Yes. Yes, they wrote that on my tape measure at work. So, yes. All right, so I saw that and I had a little tickle. It reminds me of my good times that we have in life. So, you know, what's advantages to being short? What's some advantages to being short? Fit in smaller places. Come on. Yes. Well, okay. Oh, I like that one. What else? Anybody advantage been short? Like I used to tell my friend, you don't got to bend over as far to pick something up. He didn't think it was too funny. Now, what's some advantages to being tall? Kind of the opposite of being short. You can reach up and you can get stuff. So, there are challenges to being short, and there are advantages to being short. There are challenges to being tall, and there are advantages to being tall. One funny story that my mom's not here, but I guarantee you she's watching. So, when I was a kid, I'd get up on Saturday morning, and I wanted a bowl of cereal. It's not my fault that mom and dad put the cereal in the top of the cabinet. It's not my fault that the bowls were in the top of the cabinet. They still are to this day. They need to put them down lower, okay? So, I would... Take a chair from the dining room table, slide it into the kitchen, make my way to the countertop, and get the bowl of cereal over here. Well, there was no sense in getting back down and going over and getting a bowl. So I learned that I could walk across the countertops yeah, with a bowl of cereal holding on to the top of the countertops and get, a, and get and a box of cereal to get the bowl of cereal, and then I found a way to shimmy down. Because I was too short, I couldn't reach that stuff. I was just a kid. So, so that was one of my funny little sort of stories about being short. Uh, well, today, there was a short man in our Bible. Anybody know what his name was? Zacchaeus, that's right. Zacchaeus, you know, he was a wee widow man, and a wee widow man was he. He climbed up in a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. And when the Savior walked by that day, he said, Zacchaeus, you come down out of that tree. Something like that. So Jesus walked by. But did you catch the part of the story? where Jesus walked by Zacchaeus and he said, Fred, you come down. No. He said, hey you, you, you come down. Hey, what's your name? Yeah, well, you, you come on down. What did Jesus say to Zacchaeus? He said what? Zacchaeus. You know what that tells me? That Jesus knew Zacchaeus' name. 
And I got some news for you. You looking at me? You looking at me? Jesus knows your name too. Jesus knows your name too. So as Jesus walked by that day, he said, Zacchaeus, you come down. So let me tell you this. Whether you're short or tall, whether you think you're cute or not, first of all, you are, whether you rich or poor, it doesn't matter. There's a God of the universe that loves this and created this whole great big monstrous universe. It would take a great big monstrous God to make this universe, right? It would. It would. It does. God's big, okay? Trust me. This thing ain't done by itself. I mean, it's done by itself by God, but, but it, it's a great big old universe. But do you also know that great big old God is small enough to fit inside your heart? Is small enough to care enough about you. Sure, he knows the names of a trezillion, and they're still finding stars. He, he put those stars in place. But he also put the hairs on your head in place. And the God of the universe knows your name. Let's pray. Most loving, gracious God, whether we come from many walks of life, and many walks of life are here with us today. Father, that, that's irrelevant. That makes us who we are, maybe, but is what makes us who we really are is the fact that you know our name. And most importantly, the fact that we accept that and we live our life faithfully for you. Let us be a Zacchaeus this morning. Let us go seeking the Savior because I know that you will seek us. For it's in your name that we, something that we pray. Amen. Good job, Pastor. It's been that it's been a week for me. I don't have everybody else. Yeah, I've got to tell this story. Yesterday, uh, we had a chili dinner for everybody, so we were supposed to bring stuff, and I forgot. And at the last minute, I rushed to the store, grabbed the food, ran back to my car, opened the back door to the car, was putting the groceries in, and the lady in the driver's seat said, "Sir, what are you doing in my car?" <laughs> I was thankful to God that she didn't have a gun or a taser, uh, but I left quickly. Um, anyway, pray for us. Pray for our pastor. to him I was so thirsty I asked for water my throat was so dry he gave me water that I never dreamed of but for this water my Lord had to die. He said I thirst, yet he made the rivers. He said I thirst, yet he made the sea. Now there's a river that flows as clear as crystal, and 
it comes from God's throne above. And like a river, it wells up inside me, bringing mercy and life giving love. He said, I thirst, yet he made the river. He said, I thirst, but he made the sea. One 
who bled and died for me my home my home a place i long to be yes my home is just around the bend i think about it now and then my home my home a place I long to be Yes, my home, my home A place I long to be For that's my Amen. Thank you. Go ahead and turn to Zacchaeus 19, and we'll get there in just a second. Uh, I always... Zacchaeus is in Luke chapter 19. <laughs> but turn to Zacchaeus chapter 19, verse number 1. But in, in y'all's Bible, it's probably Luke. Joe's done told you to pray for your pastor. And uh, so... So if you weren't doing that, that's on you. But if you were doing that, that's still probably on you. So there you go. Uh, Zac Story of Zacchaeus, Luke chapter 19. Yesterday morning, Joe sent, sent us a list of the music and the things, and he had special, special. Well, anytime you hear the word special, I'm like, he didn't answer what it was, so who's going to sing or what is it going to be? I trust Joe, y'all, we all, it's all good. It was phenomenal. Miss Judy did great. Joe did phenomenal. But I'm reminded that I didn't tell Joe what to sing. And Joe don't tell me what to preach, and that's kind of the way it's going to work. But the Holy Spirit's working, church. Holy Spirit's working. I want you to pay attention to the song that both of them sang. Now, obviously, Miss Judy hit a home run with talking about heaven. That's our home. And you know the story. Zacchaeus climbed down that tree, and Jesus says, I'm going to your house, and today salvation has come to your house. But I want you to pay attention to the words of Joe's song, and I probably won't make reference to it anymore, but I want you to be reminded in one of the notes in my sermon is, I'm one of the 99, and I'm thankful that I'm one of the 99. Tourist, I've had an opportunity over the last eight to ten years to travel. The girls became history buffs about five or six years ago. And you know, I've told you a story of going to all the president's homes and, and in historical places. And, and I've encountered a bunch of phenomenal places all up and down the eastern seaboard. And I'm glad I live in America. It's a beautiful country along with many other reasons. But one thing that I have noticed in my travels, and you notice them as well, anytime we go to an eating establishment or we go to a place, people are constantly looking for something. People are wanting more. They want to fulfill their earthly desires. If you don't believe me, go to the beach around spring break. Go to the beaches. That's the first. We've all been cooped up for months and we get to go out. Go on these family vacations. I've had an opportunity to go on vacation with several co-workers and friends and family members. And when they get away, they act a little bit different. I remember one time, and it wasn't such a good story. Uh, I had an opportunity to go to a safety conference. And so I went down to the safety conference. And, and my boss went with me. And my boss is a devout Sunday school teacher. I revered this man as high upstanding stout man. In the community. He said, if I'm a little late for breakfast, go on without me. Well, I found out why he was late for breakfast. And it had to do with two pretty bad choices. Matter of fact, both of them went against the Big Ten. But I learned who my boss really was. And I learned that it was for him, it wasn't a, for me it was a business trip. For him it was a trip to get away from his family. It kind of broke my heart a little bit. It hurt me. It ruined my witness for him. But what I realized was he was looking for satisfaction. He was looking for something that he couldn't get at home. He was looking for something more in life than was out there. Is that you? Now, I'm not saying don't better yourself. 
I'm not saying don't work hard. I'm not saying have lofty goals to, to have a desire. If, you, if, if one of your desires is to drive a luxury car, first of all, all cars now are just about luxury. Second of all, work for it. There's nothing wrong with having the nicest car in the parking lot. There's nothing wrong with having the nicest house in the community. Nothing wrong with that at all. Please, if that's your goal, work for it. But let's make sure that's not the only goal that we have in life. Let's make sure somewhere along the way God is involved in this. Make sure somewhere along the way that, that it involves our relationship with the one true God. Does that sound like many of us today? Does that sound like many of us? I heard, even heard a guy say one time, he says, Well, Jesus didn't have a place to lay his head. Why should I have a house? Well, okay, if that's your desire, if you, well, that's fine. But, but does that not sound like many of us? We want more. We, we, it, it ain't good enough. Let's achieve. Let's achieve. And let's move on. Well, Zacchaeus was that way. Zacchaeus wanted more. Zacchaeus was physically fit. Zacchaeus was a wealthy man. He had all the possessions, but there wasn't enough. Zacchaeus wasn't satisfied. He knew there was more. Transformation is the word that I'm thinking of this morning. Transformation is what happened to Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus didn't just ask Jesus into his heart. Zacchaeus was transformed. Let's stand in honor of reading God's word. Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19 says, And Jesus passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was among the chief, the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was. And he could not press, because he was little in stature. And he ran before, and he climbed up in a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. Verse number 5, And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and he saw him, and he said, Zacchaeus, make haste, come down, for today I must abide in your house. And he made haste, and he came down, and he received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they murmured. <laughs> this morning's Sunday school lesson was on the preacher. This Sunday school, this verse right here is on the church. When he saw it, they murmured. The people, the crowdsmen, the people following Jesus, they murmured, saying, He has gone to be a guest with that sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of the goods to the poor, and if I have taken anything falsely, I will restore it fourfold. And Jesus said to him, This day is salvation has come to this house for as much as as also is a son of Abraham. Verse number 10. For the Son of Man is came to seek and to save that which was lost. Most loving, gracious God, add a ring of your word. Make it alive and well in us today. Father, hide me behind the cross that they not see me, but that they see a risen Savior. For it's in His name that we pray. Amen. That particular day, Zacchaeus was not just saved. Okay, Zacchaeus was not just saved. Zacchaeus was transformed. What does it take for a transformation? Hmm. Glad you ask. Believe in Jesus. Zacchaeus was a tax collector who was very rich. He was responsible for defrauding the tax collectors. You know how it works. If you don't know how it works, hit me after church. I will explain the tax system back in the day. Just like today, it was dirty and shady. Then it was even more dirty and shady. We're not going there. Zacchaeus was a tax collector and he was not very nice about it. So he was a short man and the crowd surrounded Jesus. The people would not let Zacchaeus push through the crowd that day. Could you imagine being frustrated? All you want to do is see Jesus and you're, you can't fight through. What would many of us do? What would many of us do if the crowd was too big? We done it the other night. We had a chance to go out and eat. We went out to eat at a restaurant. We pulled up and they were lined up out the door. Stephanie ran inside. They said it'll be an hour wait. You know what we did? We got in the car and drove on. It wasn't worth it. 
It wasn't worth it. But that day, for Zacchaeus, it was worth it. Zacchaeus didn't let the crowd get into his way. Zacchaeus says, okay, he's headed down Haines Road. He's going to get into Haines Road. He's got to go right or go left. If he goes left, he's going into Jerusalem. So I'm going to go run ahead, and I'm going to go over here on Deep Springs Road, and, and I'm going to climb up in that sycamore tree, and I'm going to sit right there. Because all I need to do is see Jesus. All I need to do is see Jesus, is what Zacchaeus said. Zacchaeus said, I just got to see Jesus. I just need to see Jesus. And he, he went on. And you know what that's called? That's called faith. That's called faith. Just imagine the faith of Zacchaeus. If I just see Jesus, it'll all go away. It'll all go away. All these troubles and struggles in life will just go away if I could just see my Jesus. So Zacchaeus put his faith in Jesus that day. Let me ask you this, church, to piggyback off of last week, scaffold, as my Sunday school teacher taught you this morning, where are you getting your answers from? What do you have to see to believe? What can you just get your hands on? If, if you got your hands on this thing, would you believe? What is that thing? What is that one thing? What is that thing that you have to have in order to believe? Did you get an answer? You got your answer? What's that one thing? If you answered anything but Jesus, I've got an appointment with you after church. If you answered anything but Jesus, I've got an appointment with you after church. And we need to talk about what that one main thing is. That main thing must be Jesus. So once we believe in Jesus, then what we must do? We must obey Jesus. Here's where we are. Many of you all don't believe in Jesus and you shun me out and you ain't going to listen because this is a message for the sinners. This is a message for the lost people. You better listen close. The message a year ago was for the lost people. The message today is for you, not your neighbor. I ain't talking to your neighbor. I'm talking to you. So we must obey Jesus. Jesus walked by, said, Zacchaeus. He said, Rachel, Helen, Dan, Mackenzie, Yvonne, Steve. He said your name that day. We can change this for a second. We're not rewriting the Bible. That day he said your name. We need to be like Zacchaeus. When Jesus hollers, we need to obey. When Jesus speaks, we need to obey. I liked, I liked how the King James says it. The King James says that he made haste. He didn't waste no time. You know, we've got sycamore trees in East Tennessee, and they're big, they're big, massive trees. We've got one over on the farm. Boy, to climb that thing, get up there, and when you get up there, you've got to get down. Zacchaeus says, forget this. He said my name. He knows my name. I'm shimmying on down. Are you willing to obey, though? Ooh, that preacher, get back on those sinners. Get back on those lost folks. Leave me alone. No, 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 no. The tax collector immediately came down and welcomed Jesus into his house. Believing alone isn't good enough. Believing alone isn't good enough. You got to act on it. You got to act on it. I, I, I go to the doctor and the doctor says, if you'll take this medicine and learn to eat right, you'll get your health turned around. I believe you, doc. I believe you, doc. I take that medicine, I home, I put it on the counter, I don't touch it. I go back in six months and the doctor says, whoa, you're getting worse. Are you taking that medicine? No, doc, I believe that it would heal me. Well, the doctor says, well, you got to take that medicine. That'd be dumb, wouldn't it? We wouldn't do that. that would, we would not do that. Then why do we do it with Jesus? Then why do we do it with our Christian lives? then why do we do it with our church fellowship? Then why do we do it in our spiritual lives? Why? Why? 
Why? I can't answer that for you unless you're just, can I say the word stupid this morning? Sorry, that's, I'll get in trouble for that one too, but, but it is, that's what it is. Warren Buffett, who, who says the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results. You're going to do the same thing over and over, you're going to get the same result unless you change it up. Well, let's change it this morning, church. Let's change it this morning. You've done said you believe. You've done said you're willing to obey. Now let's obey. When we believe and we obey, that leads to a response of repentance. The response of repentance for Zacchaeus was what? I'll give half of what I've got to the poor. Half of what i got to the poor. I'll give it right off the top. And Joe, if I've done you wrong, I'll pay you back fourfold. David, if I've done you wrong, I'll pay you back fourfold. Stephanie, go see Zacchaeus. Get him to pay you back even if he didn't do you wrong. He said, I'm going to pay you back. That was not an act of merit. No. That was an act of repentance. Because he didn't have to do it. He didn't have to do it. He says, I'm going to because I'm a brand new person. I'm new. I'm real. I'm who I am today. And Jesus' response is, salvation has came to the house because of this man is the son of Abraham. You see, the reason I know that Zacchaeus' response was one of genuineness and one of merit, and not merit, was one of repentance, was Jesus' response. Now let's go back to theology just for a second. Do we believe that God is all-knowing? Yes. And we do believe that God so loved the world that He sent His only begotten Son. So there's the Trinity. We got the Son. We got God and Jesus. So if God is all-knowing, then Jesus is all-knowing. Jesus sees the inside of our heart. Okay? Jesus knows. When Zacchaeus spoke, the world heard the voice. Jesus saw the heart. So when my Jesus says, this man has received salvation, guess what I believe? This man has received salvation because Jesus looked into his heart. Jesus looked into his heart and it was real and it was genuine. I said it last week and I said it again and I'm going to get you the words of the song. You're going to sing it for me. We're playing games at the foot of the cross. You might can fool me. You might can fool my Sunday school teacher. You might can fool the average Joe Church member. Matter of fact, you might can fool this whole world. But you ain't going to fool Jesus. You ain't going to fool Jesus. So let's quit playing games at the foot of the cross. Let's quit saying words that don't mean nothing. Filibuster is the word that they use in the, in the secular side of things. He filibusted that thing. Let's quit wasting words and let's be a people of action. Faith. Do you realize that Zacchaeus never met Jesus? Do you realize that Jesus never met Zacchaeus? Matter of fact, the two were just about as polar opposite as you come. Jesus being the Son of God and Zacchaeus being literally a son of the government. Just about as far apart as you can get. But as I told the kids this morning, he knew his name. And also, did you catch this? Zacchaeus was not a believer, but he knew he had to get to Jesus. That's called faith. That's called faith. And then we get into the word called obedience. Acting upon that faith. Let me ask you a question, church. When was the last time you acted upon your faith? Okay, I, I take my diabetic medicine like I'm supposed to. My numbers have came down and it's working. I'm doing great. The doctor's pleased. I had faith in my doctor. I ain't worried about that kind of faith. When was the last time you acted on your obedience, Christian faith? When was the last time God said, hey, go over there and do this? 
we make an announcement, we got, a, we got a, someone in church needing to be fed. I ain't talking to your neighbor. God's talking to you. Maybe you're the one that needs to go take food to your neighbor. And some, many of you all do that, okay? We're, we're, we're good now. We can always use more, but we're good now. That wasn't a beat up message. That was a, I'm not, it's time for you to get involved message, okay? It's time for you to, to get involved message. So there's faith involved. There's obedience. And then there's a response. Zacchaeus' response was, Yes, Lord. Zacchaeus' response was, Yes, Lord. What's going to happen, church, if you're up in that sycamore tree and you're looking around and Jesus comes by and says, Hey, I'm going to your house today. Come on down. What would you do? That's what I thought. Many of us would stay up in the tree. It's comfortable up here, Jesus. If I get down, I got to get, that's, that's mud down there. I'm, I'm a tax collector, Jesus. They know me. They know I'm not a good person. I can't come down out of that tree. They're going to beat me up. They're going to talk about me, Alan. They're going to talk about me. So I'm just going to stay up here in this tree. Many of you all are like, Preacher, you've lost it this morning. Have I? Have I? Or maybe I'm just enough your pastor to know that many of us would stay up in that tree. What a shameful end to a very good story if we just stayed up in the tree. I don't know about you, church, but I don't want to be up in that tree no more. Maybe I want to get up into that tree to see my Jesus. Maybe I'm up in that tree because it is comfortable. Maybe I'm up in that tree because that's where I need to be right now. But you can't serve up in that tree. It's time many of us get down out of the tree. It's time that we start doing what the Lord asks us to do. Do you realize that all God told Zacchaeus to do that day? He didn't lay out a three-month budget plan. He didn't lay out a 16-step improvement plan for his life. He didn't make it. He didn't, tell, he didn't tell Zacchaeus, you go home and you read these three books and there'll be a study guide at the end and you answer all the questions. He didn't give Zacchaeus any detail except for Zacchaeus come down. I'm going to your house. Well, today, church, Zacchaeus is saying, Come down out of the tree. I want to live in your heart. Come down out of that tree. I want to obtain salvation through you. Preacher, I'm saved. Well, good. Get out of that tree and start serving him. Preacher, I'm lost. Well, get out of that tree and accept the full pardon of sin through my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let today be the day that salvation comes to your house. Preacher, I'm too embarrassed. I don't want to come down front. See me after church. Preacher, I'm, I don't like you. Well, good. Go see Joe. Go see Tammy. Rachel's in seminary. She knows everything. She's really smart, by the way. Don't let today not be the day that you obtain salvation. And don't let today not be the day that you get down out of that tree. As we enter our time of invitation, is it trust and obey? We're going to trust and obey. And I'm going to trust and obey that you're going to make the right response. Church, you can't stay still and move. It's impossible. It's impossible. For so many years, 
we've been standing still expecting to move. You can't stand still and move. So why don't we trust and obey? Why don't we put actions to the teachings of our forefathers? Why don't we put action to the teachings of Jesus Christ? It's time we get down out of that tree. The altar is open for you today. As I said last week, and I'm going to try to do this every week, if I say, if you're too embarrassed to come to the altar, it's fine. We'll get to Romans 10, 9, and 10 in just a second. Slip your hand up. Get my attention. And I'll be your Jesus. I'll come meet you where you are. And we can talk about it. Or maybe you just want to pray. Preacher, I'm saved. I just, I just want you to pray with me. Slip your hand up and hear the invitation. Joe knows to keep singing. It'll be all right. How about it, church? Let's get down out of the tree. You want to? Let's stand as we sing. Page 157 in the red book. <coughs> When we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, what a glory He sheds on our way while we do His good will. He abides with us still and with all who Trust and obey, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Not a shadow can rise. Not a cloud in the skies, but his smile quickly drives it away. Not a doubt nor a fear, not a sigh nor a tear can abide while we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Not a burden we bear, not a sorrow we share, but our toil He doth richly repay. Not a grief nor a loss, not a frown nor a cross, but is blessed if we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Did you notice the words to Joe's song? I said I wasn't going to go there, but God laid it on my heart, so we've got to go there just for a second. He said, I, Jesus said, I thirst, but He created the rivers. Jesus struggled so that we don't have to. Amen. Church, it's time we stop struggling. I promise, the tree feels comfortable. The sycamore tree looks good. But it's doing more harm than good, church. It's time, church. It's time, and it starts by serving on. Serve on. Thank you.